let me present the next talk uh, by Jung, Jung who will, uh, from Kyung He University, who will talk about unfolding conformal geometry. So okay. please. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I would like to thank organizer for this invitation. It's a nice uh, to talk in this audience. So what I will talk about is uh, this unfolding conformal geometry. By conformal geometry, I mean uh, offshore conformal gravity, uh, offshore wire, wire gravity. And this work is uh, in collaboration with my, new, uh, my two students, Mingi Kim and Yujin Kim. Uh, actually, they are uh, master students. And let me begin with my uh, personal uh, motivation for this project. <clears throat> Uh, actually, two years ago, Nicola Blanze visited uh, Korea uh, in the summer. And then uh, at that time, so I had these two students. I want to give them uh, some, some computer coding uh, project, mathematical related, so that they can learn those. And then even they don't uh, continue uh, PhD, they can, it might be useful. And then Nicola, and then I, I was discussing this with Nicola, and then Nicola mentions that his work about this wire invariant densities. <clears throat> As you know, so the wire, and in wire anomaly, there are type A and type B anomaly. Type A is the usual uh, Euler density, and type B anomaly is just contractions of wire tensors or covariant contractions of covariant, covariant derivatives of wire, uh, wire tensors. So in uh, four dimension, it's just wire square, but in six dimension, there are non-trivial combination. And in eight dimension, it's not, uh, uh, was not well known, but, uh, but uh, until the time that Nicola and his col uh, collaborator, Johanna Edmanger, uh, found this in 2004, <clears throat> in eight, eight dimension. So there, uh, by making use of certain algebra, a cohomology setup and then some algebraic setup, and, and together with some mathematical code, they managed to class, classify the AT uh, type B wire anomaly, or if you like, wire invariant. So he was mentioning this. So I so that seems to be a nice uh, thing to give uh, to students. Probably they can check eight dimensional case and then maybe go for 10 dimension. So that was the kind of beginning of this project for me. But unfortunately, after that, uh, this uh, pandemic, <laughs> Corona pandemic arrived and we didn't manage to discuss often. And then, so just in Korea, me and my student had to try to and understand the, the code of uh, Nicola and also the setup that Nicola invented. And then eventually drifted to some other directions. Uh, and then that led to, to this project. <clears throat> so in the end, uh, somehow I end up with uh, Onboarding. <laughs> so somehow I, I wanted to avoid to give a higher spin or some this kind of formal problem to master students, but in the end I <laughs> could not escape. And then in the end we end up uh, with doing this uh, onboarding conformal geometry things. So here, so let me just briefly uh, uh, tell you what uh, Nicola uh, did uh, in this work, 2004. So there he, uh, somehow considered the uh, uh, co covariant derivative of wire tensors. So he defined what is wire covariant derivative and then uh, it is acting on these wire tensors. So this was defined you know, in a way that the uh, wire vi variation, variations of this object is only uh, proportional to the derivative of a wire parameter. So it's just one derivative, no, no higher derivative, no higher derivative. Then uh, using this basis, uh, we make up we make some ansat for this uh, vial anomaly invariant densities, and then just ask uh, that uh, uh, the vial invariance. So then you write down all possible ansats and then ask vial invariance. Then you end up with some 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 relations and you solve that relations. So this is a quite complicated task. So he could do it uh, with the help of Mathematica. <clears throat> So, but uh, yeah, so to, to, we wanted to understand these structures and clearly something was uh, uh, visible already and then Nicola already knew that uh, this uh, covariant derivative is something to do with uh, the Thomas Diop operator. 
um, already uh, well known in the, in the in the field of conformal geometry. And then also what we uh, what uh, caught to our attention is this wire covariant derivatives, this object. So we tried, we wanted to understand this. I mean, Nicola has good understanding, but we wanted to have a different understanding or just to understand in a different angle. And then we, that led to this uh, unfold, uh, unfolding of conformal geometry. So before uh, moving to uh, this uh, conformal, uh, and more the details of this uh, unfolding conformal geometry, uh, let me first uh, apologize about the reference. Uh, since uh, this subject is quite, quite vast. And also I think there are many uh, development which were, were happened in even in independent manner. So, so I'm still learning those and then I'm still working on this uh, uh, project which hopefully appear in a few weeks. So I could not uh, put enough care on this, uh, on these references, but I want, I, I just put some names so that you can have some flavor and some 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 feeling. So, <clears throat> so the, the the starting point of unfolding conformal geometry is this uh, uh, SO two comma D conformal group, SO two comma D uh, gauge formulations, which was actually discussed by uh, Sergey this uh, this morning. So this was uh, used in various mathematical sectors. So basically we begin with uh, this uh, case one form um, taking value in the algebra of SO2, D. So uh, this translation, usual translation is uh, with, with uh, this fair bind and spin connection and is, uh, comes with uh, Lorentz. And then there are two more. Uh, this uh, the one uh, comes with a, a special conformal generator special conformal transformation generator is called A, FA, and then dilatation is B. So there are two, uh, two additional uh, one form fields. And then we can also introduce curvatures. So there is uh, some torsion-like curvature and then really Riemann-like curvatures. And there are also curvature corresponding to F, which is the, the special conform and also curvature corresponding to D. Then, then uh, like uh, um, similarly to the uh, Riemannian geometry where we need to impose torsionless conditions in the conformal setting, we also need to impose a torsionless condition, but, or, but also other condition, uh, which looks like this, some uh, contractions of uh, the, this inner product, uh, inner, inner product of uh, this uh, the J part, uh, vanishes. This is additional constraint. And actually this implies that the uh, uh, dilatation part of the curvature also vanishes. So this is a well-known thing. So I think I learned that this is, carries the name of normal condition in this parabolic geometry. Anyway, so you can do this. Then you can check that actually by solving this constraint, uh, uh, li like in the Riemannian geometry case, spin connection is uniquely determined in terms of E and also uh, B. And then uh, the other constraint fixes F in terms of the, the rest. So in the end, you end up with the only E and B and then omega and F are completely fixed by constraint. And then now you can also consider the gauge symmetry. You have a gauge symmetry corresponding to P, J, K and D. So Epsilon, which is a translation like and then Lorentz like and then special conform like and then uh, dilatation like. <clears throat> And then using, so he, uh, among these four uh, transformation, using uh, kappa transformation under which B transforms algebra algebraically, uh, we can fix B to zero. So in this way, we can eliminate also B. So in the end, uh, after doing this, we end up with the only E. And then uh, as usual, uh, as, uh, as, as in the case of Riemannian geometry, we can use Lorentz to fix E to only G. So in this way, you, you end up with only the metric tensors and then remaining uh, gauge transformation is only epsilon and sigma. <clears throat> and, and then epsilon becomes default and sigma becomes a wire transformation. So this is a well-known story. And this is the, in a sense, starting point. <sighs> so the important thing is uh, the observation that, okay, the, what we have uh, just, what we just described can be written in this way. 
So zero is uh, the, the consequence of the constraint. But uh, some, sometimes we cannot put completely the curvature. I mean, certain component of curvature is zero. So we want to write the equation in a way that anything we cannot put to zero in the curvature side is uh, we need to put some, some, some arbitrary field. So then we, we, we can put this way here and the other side. So the, the J, J side and also kappa side, we have two, uh, one, uh, zero form. So this is uh, uh, one form. The equation is itself is two form, the right hand side of equation. I have two form, we have two form. And then this guy is uh, a zero form encoding that uh, something cannot be killed by constraint. <clears throat> and then C is actually has interpretations of bio tensor because it, it precisely it has, uh, because of this algebraic Bianchi identity as it has uh, uh, this symmetry and also traceless conditions. And then C, which is appearing in K side is cotton center. So this is a uh, still well-known stuff. And then here I used this kappa covariant derivative, a K covariant derivative, which is K is in a sense sort of a, um, uh, sub algebra, which is Lorentz versions of maximal complex sub algebra. So this is latations and this is Lorentz, so D and J part. So in this way, the K is carries a Lorentz covariant derivative as well as B part. And then the B part comes with the coefficients, which is uh, given by the, uh, conformal weight. <clears throat> so good. So then uh, the idea of unfolding, so my unfolding itself is uh, I mean, developed by Vasiliev and many other people. And uh, also applying this unfolded formulation to conformal system was a pioneer by, by this paper and also many other papers by Misha and also other people. So in this unfolding, so what we, the main idea is that uh, here, we want to regard these two guys, which was a bile and cotton tensor, but we want to regard them as uh, independent, independent to new fields, zero form fields. So in this way, we want, we want to also add equation for them, evolution equation for them, for the bile tensors and uh, cotton tensors. So we want to regard them just a new independent field. So in this way, we had to consider some equation which starts from derivative of this C and derivative of C. So in this way, actually we had to introduce also some yet another new fields, new zero form fields. So this is the idea of unfolding. To, to summarize the idea, what we need to do is that uh, we add new, uh, so for, for any fields appearing in this uh, system of equation, there should be derivative of something and then so we add uh, the equation in a way that uh, newly added fields, for instance, this one, should be completely fixed by the pre-existing field, for instance, this, this, or the one form field. And also the con uh, condition is that uh, by adding this equation, we should not reduce, uh, uh, impose uh, some additional constraint on pre-existing field, for instance, this guys or one form fields, E, omega, whatever, those. So in this way, we, we don't add any dynamic equation, but just we rewrite this conformal geometry. So by conformal, I want to, I put the conformal geometry to emphasize that we are uh, discussing offshore systems. And then this should be done in a way that uh, satisfies Bianchi identity. So since we have, we need to deal with infinitely many degrees of freedom, we need to la label them in a efficient manner. And that can be done uh, by using the K label the K label in the sense that the dilatation label, which is conformal weight, and then uh, Lorentz transformation label, Lorentz tensor label. And then there are infinitely many uh, these tensors. And the general form of the unfolded education, we can easily uh, just write down. So it should be, so any of these tensor, if we take the derivative, K covariant derivative, it should be uh, one form because the C was zero form and we added one form uh, differential. So this guy's right hand side should be uh, one form. So there is only two pro possibility, e, proportional to E or F because omega and B cannot be there because of K covariance. So we, uh, what is proportional to E is we write as uh, some function if, uh, E and then what is uh, proportional to F, I, I put a curly F. So this are uh, some nonlinear functions in C a priori, but uh, 
what is good is that uh, since uh, uh, this all this should be uh, covariant with the uh, dilatations uh, so this c the 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 total degree of c should be delta plus 1 so c is polynomial but uh, it polynomial which preserves the, the, this uh, homogeneous in the total conformal weight also this guy is conform total conformal weight delta minus 1 and then uh, since uh, c Conformal weight is bounded by below two because the vial tensor was two and the cotton tensor was three. And then we add the uh, conformal weight four guys, conformal weight five. So everything is uh, just uh, two, three, four, five uh, organized in this manner. So, so because of this conformal weight is bounded, this guys for, for a fixed delta, this function is just polynomial, not an arbitrary function, but just some relatively simple. I mean, if it's uh, uh, four, then only so this is total five. So what can be there is that C conformal weight five or four, you no know, three two only only quadratic, not the quadratic for instance. So in this way we can study tail expansions of these functions and then try to see what would be the consistency. And by by using consistency we can try to determine this e and f. So in this way we can first look the first order part. So first order part, I mean, the, this linear part, if you like, linear part. So linear part is just, the, I mean, the first expansion coefficient and the, the, the expansion part. But this we can express uh, as uh, the actions of some operator on C, linear, linear actions of P, P on C, and then write it in, in this manner. So this E part was written as P, and then F part was written as K. So this is not, uh, so this P is, looks like a translation and K looks like a special conformal transformation because actually Bianchi identity, if we if, uh, ask Bianchi identity and what we wrote as P and what we wrote as K should satisfy this, uh, this condition, which is precisely the, the algebra of uh, SO2 comma D. So in this way, uh, we, we find that, okay, P and K is this linear part of a uh, linear part of uh, E and F function is nothing but uh, representations of conformal uh, algebra. <clears throat> and it, we need to, so just, uh, we need to determine them. Uh, at this stage, uh, how P acts and how K acts on the space of C is not known. So we need to determine those. So for that, we can uh, just uh, do brute force uh, computations. So P is uh, some operator which is mapping C to another C. So then uh, a priori there can be four different operations because it's a Lorentz tensors adding one index. So it's uh, like one uh, Lorentz tensor, we add one box. So there are, and, and most four different things. Add, add, add one box, first column or remove, or add the second line or remove. So there are four different possibilities also in the K side. And what is not determined is that the, the, prop, the this coefficient in front of this operator. So this operator is uh, what is known as uh, set operators, for instance, in the paper of uh, Ponomarev and Vasilyev. So there, uh, uh, they were studying uh, massive or partially massless systems. But here we have a slightly extended, uh, in a sense, spectrum, slightly general spectrum. And then the, even though that the same set operator appears, the, the, what we need to solve is slightly different or it's bigger system. And here we also defined this set operator in term, in, by using uh, this uh, di uh, differential operators, auxiliary variable. U is uh, something to do with the first line and V is something to do with the second line. And also by defining uh, two set operators and also using uh, some algebra, we could easily uh, find out the uh, recurrence relations uh, among those coefficients. So from the PP generator, we get some recurrence relation of type PP, P, so this small p is this coefficient of this type. And from this equation, we have this type and the other equation, we have the other type. So maybe it's uh, uh, interesting to observe that uh, Compared to the usual uh, this unfolded equation, uh, linearized unfolded equation, we have uh, this uh, inhomogeneous different inhomogeneous recurrence uh, equation. 
And this uh, was playing really capital role because it uh, helps us to determine some specific conformal dimension, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And then uh, by solving this, uh, we could, uh, I mean, uh, we, we could solve it in uniquely up to field redefinition. And then th in this way, we could identify what is the uh, content of this official conformal uh, gravity or conformal geometry. But at the time, at same time, we could also also consider various on shell system by killing some fields together with some coefficient, which is available uh, as solutions. And then by doing that, we could consider, for instance, just on shell conformal gravity or even Einstein gravity or various on shell other gravitational systems. So, for instance, this is the set of fields that we found. And then all these lines are this coefficient P and K. But we could see that uh, we, we could truncate this way. And we see that precisely this line is uh, uh, just uh, t equal 4. We, we see that we don't have this line. In this way, we have uh, some invariance of space appearing. And then that is nothing but this Park tensor. So by killing this to 0, we end up with the on-shell conformal gravity. Or, but equally, we could do also just truncate this side, and we end up with a Nestle system, for instance. So this could be done at the linearized level, <clears throat> linear level. But uh, now, so what we can, at this point, to what we can realize is in the end, what we do is that constructing some representations of conformal algebra, and uh, what are what can they be? So that we can look up the literatures. And then we found that actually they are what is called the off-shell Fradkin Zeitlin module. On-shell Fradkin Zeitlin module is nothing but uh, the solutions of the uh, back, quote unquote, back, back flood equations. And that is a, essentially, it can, it can be interpreted in, in this way. There's some uh, Fradkin Zeitlin field is subject to the back, back equations. But the Fradkin Zeitlin field itself is what is called off-shell Fradkin Zeitlin module, which is uh, in the spin two cases, it can be interpreted in this way. Metric tensors, remove gauge, and add the conformal killing tensors. So gauge is uh, this uh, GPL plus um, uh, vial. And then if we this module is known, and if we decompose uh, on, into this uh, K subgroup, uh, so 1, 1 and Lorentz, uh, Lorentz then we, we get this result, which precisely matches with uh, what we found. And by the way, this uh, field content is what appears also the, in, in the constructions of Nicola and collaborators. So anyway, we were happy to identify precisely the module, which was in a sense easy to guess, but somehow we didn't realize in the beginning of the work. And the later we realized, and then actually this helped uh, us to clarify many aspects. So it was interesting to observe this. So we wanted to go, go to higher order, but it was, uh, we realized it's not a simple task. So we, I will just sketch them. So in the nonlinear non general equation is this form, as I said. So the E is, it comes with some functions and F comes with some functions. Bianchi identity will have this form, this, this, and this. This is a nonlinear version of KK commutator. And this is a uh, nonlinear version of PP commutator. And this is nonlinear version of PK commutator. And then uh, since uh, everything is polynomial, I mean, the, can be expanded also in delta, the program, problem is relatively well organized. So for instance, to attack the first uh, nonlinear order, we can solve relatively simple equations, which is uh, to, just to try to find out how to contract uh, two vital tensors, actually, this object. Yeah. And then we solve this. And then next we solve these guys, which is how to contract these two file tensor, which is rank four and rank five, uh, one, uh, this zero form. So in this way, we can just uh, divide this problem into smaller pieces, which is a finite dimensional real algebra problem, essentially. But uh, this, uh, unfortunately, we didn't do. Probably to do to attack this, we would need also some mathematical code. But what is uh, fun at this stage is to see that uh, in the linearized case, actually, we could uh, reduce on shell system or some other dynamical system. But it's interesting to observe that this can be probably done even in the nonlinear case, nonlinear level. For instance, suppose that we have a completely of, uh, un unfolded equation for conformal geometry, then uh, the, the reduction to various on shell system can be done by imposing some 
uh, algebraic constraint. For instance, uh, Einstein gravity can be obtained by imposing this constraint, just F is proportional to E, then we, we know that this is uh, Scouten tensors and this is a matrix, so it, it will be just Einstein equations. But you can also consider some other things. Scouten tensor, this is essentially uh, Riem uh, Riemann, a rich tensor, it is uh, proportional to C4, which is four derivative things. So then it, it will be some non-trivial equations, which is involving two derivative and four derivative of uh, the metric tensors. And even more generally, we can consider these kind of equations. So for instance, com uh, if we consider conformal, unshared conformal gravity, we need to put the Bach tensor to vanish. So this is the Bach tensors if it was a linearized level. But uh, uh, we are not sure whether this will be really completely the Bach, Bach tensor in the full nonlinear level. So then uh, what we know is that actually Bach tensor should be the, at the linearized level, it should be annihilated by the k-action special component so that it has a, it forms an invariant submodule. So we can think that, okay, it, similar things should happen in, even in the nonlinear level. Then this uh, Bach tensor can be defined as some, some function which is start from linear part and then which is annihilated by nonlinear actions of k. So this can be defined in this way. So then uh, the, we can also consider wide invariance or wide anomaly. Uh, for that, we introduce uh, this uh, ansatz. So D uh, form, which is uh, the form degrees all saturated by the E and then some, some density. In this way, this can be strictly wide invariant. Otherwise, if there is any F, then under special under dilatation, there will be total derivative all the time. So we, we, we can make sure that, okay, this is the only candidate. And then if we take the gauge variation, what is funny is that, uh, is that the P transformation and kappa transformation factorizes. And then uh, what we, is sufficient is this to vanish. And this is nothing but just kappa transformation. So kappa, kappa invariance, K invariance guarantees that uh, uh, P invariance. So in this way, so what we need to solve is that um, some K invariance scala. So Please note that here we noticed we required the K invari invariance of some tensors, but here K invariance some scalar. But actually, this is the, the, the equation that uh, Nicola and uh, his uh, uh, Edmanger considered to construct these wide invariant densities. And then, indeed, we have exactly the same pattern. And actually, the procedure is just the same thing, but just written slightly different languages. But what was good is that we have a precise module structure. Everything is written in a, in a lot of um, irreducible um, blocks and we could easily assess the, the number of possible terms. For instance, for four dimensional cases, we have this ansat, we have one, and then we have indeed one guys. And then in six dimension, what we can write is we have all, uh, only three possibilities. And then if we take variation, then actually, in as a variation, what it can appear is only two. The variation should be vector and then dimension five, dimension five. Dimension five vector, there are only two. So in this way, five minus two, there are only one non-trivial variant, non which is non-trivial in the sense which is something which, which cannot be written as contractions of white tensors. We can repeat these things in eight dimensions. Eight dimension, what we get is uh, as a quadratic term, there are seven and then 11. And then vector, which is uh, the candidate for the case of uh, variation, we have eight and seven. So in the beginning, we thought that, okay, th it's 18 and then 15. So probably we have three, but actually Nicola found five and Nicola and collaborators found five. There was this mismatch. So we talked, so, and indeed, uh, so we, after some discussion with Nicola, we real, uh, he pointed out that actually in his classification, uh, four of five is uh, making use of only CCC structures. Actually, which is matches of here in this part because uh, by variations of CCC never gives uh, these guys because it uh, still it and preserves the, the order of C or just increase. So this 11 object is, goes to this seven dimensional. So in this way, if this is um, surjective, then actually there are four solutions. And then here there is some issue because seven goes eight, naively one can say that there is no solution, but we know that there is, should exist solutions. 
and and indeed we find uh, among eight six is some special so this is still <laughs> ongoing so i cannot say more but um, anyway so we could see some patterns and in 10 dimension we also found exact numbers and probably um, we can have some better estimations but uh, still it's uh, ongoing things and then, uh, so let me also comment about this nonlinear action that we are finding because by uh, finding this uh, uh, unfolded equation, we find that we, we have natural definitions of nonlinear actions, which is given by this function E and F on C side. So this is not surprising because after all, this unfolded, we know that unfolded equation is related to the Lie algebraic system. So, so SO2, D is not deformed, somehow the representation is nonlinearly deformed. And then in this way, what is fun is that uh, we can act SO2, D not on the space of C, but on the space of functions of C. So space of C can be viewed as some sort of Hilbert space. We know that all these representation theories stuff, but uh, this guy is not acting on the naturally on this space, but the space of functions of C then probably natural interpretation would be some sort of Fox space. So it will be fun to understand this point. And in this way, and also the two conditions that we are looking, this one, which is uh, some functions of C, which is annihilated by K. So then uh, this reminds us this uh, lowest state representation, but this at this time should be uh, extended to the lowest functions somehow. So then, uh, so the, now, so it's, since my time is over, I want to just conclude. So it'll be fun to understand these things uh, more deeply, and then probably that suggests us to look some nonlinear extensions of this representation theory. Probably that will tell us more about uh, this uh, uh, theory. And probably, so this is so this we this, we see it just uh, from higher. Uh, conformal geometry, but we can apply this to any other dynamical system. And then the same kind of structure should exist. So it will be fun to um, um, just to try to understand this problem. And also as future plant, I mean, I, we need to com complete this by invariant uh, estimations and also add the scalars or conformal spins free or considering just conformal uh, higher spin would be fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuhun. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, let's uh, start our, probably immediately our uh, discussions session with the questions to Yuhun so that he can use his slides. Please. There is one uh, from uh, Maxim Grigoriev, please. Okay, thank you. Hi, Han. So I, I wanted to make a small comment, which I think could be useful for understanding and development. In fact, there is a general statement which tell us that uh, unfolded, unfolding of something is the same as uh, what is called minimal model of BRST complex. And uh, in, for conformal, for off-shell conformal gravity, <laughs> its minimal model was essentially computed by uh, Nicolas. It was not manifestly OD2 invariant, but, uh, but, but, but it was computed. And in this sense, the unfolding uh, to this extent, uh, it was known and probably it is not then surprising that your computations in uh, in, uh, in, in, in your approach uh, coincide or very, are very similar to what uh, Nicolai and collaborators were doing. And in addition, let me also mention that uh, also the, the formulation of conformal, of conformal gravity, of shell conformal gravity, where OD2 of BRST complex of this, where OD2 is manifestly realized, is also known in the literature from which you can essentially read off if you want. Of course, it doesn't give you immediately answer, but I think it is important for understanding. And uh, uh, also this Lie algebraic, which you mentioned, is precisely this. It's just another name for this Q-manifold, uh, which is uh, the, the, the BRST complex. Okay, uh, sorry for <laughs> not really question, but <laughs> comment, but I think it can be useful for 
uh, understanding of our audi audience the relations indeed many many things was already known and then many mathematical concepts are related so yeah thank you for the comment please uh, other questions to you uh, uh, can I ask one question uh Yes, uh, I don't see who is that. Uh, it's uh, Carlo, sorry, I will start. Uh, uh, Carlo, uh, sorry please, about please. Uh, Hello, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, sorry, can you maybe go back to the slide where you were mentioning the shadow field, oh, well, the shadow representation? There, there was, I mean, the question is a bit, maybe you said it and I missed it, but what is exactly the characterization of the shadow? Uh, yes, which is, uh, I would have said shadow is the module to the one with delta 2 minus s for spin s. <clears throat> what is exactly the, that characterization from the point of view? What is the relation uh, with respect to massless fields? I mean, um, I'm basically, I'm asking you to uh, explain uh, that equation from the point of view of uh, the one with the back back flat equation exactly. Mm -hmm. What is the relation with the what massless modules? Let's say uh, here um, algebraically speaking, how would you characterize S? Massless. You, you mean uh, second two derivative equation? Yeah, yeah, by massless, I'm referring to the ds plus d minus 2, yeah. Yes. Uh, that so, the relation not obvious. But here, here maybe just uh, let me mention just... Yes. So here the reasoning is that we want to identify this own shared platkin jetlin module, and okay. which was uh, found in several quotient, as you may or no, yeah. and then interpret them in, in a field theoretical manner. Yes. So that, or, but somehow, so this uh, seems to play the role of uh, the field itself. So in that sense, uh, shadow, because it has a, I mean, conformal dimension and also all this interpretation makes sense. But uh, somehow if you want to uh, interpret them in the, uh, in the, for the massless fields in uh, d plus one dimension, I don't remember that there is a uh, simple use of the, 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 this this module in the definitions of those. Okay, so they, they do not. Uh, I thought that from that equation one could essentially read uh, the characterization from the point of view of uh, with respect to massless modules, like for example that a specific quotient of mm -hmm. a massless module would. Uh, isolate or rather no. the, the opposite but whether it, it should be in a sort of dual dual relations yeah. with the uh, module mm -hmm. so what i didn't put here is that if you decompose massless module yeah massless module on your massless module yes. in this in this manner so then actually the the vector space the lorentz part of vector space is same so uh -huh. which is so just Different component dimensions, but precisely this pattern arises with the same same multiplicity. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it has it is dual. Just it has different conformal dimensions, but yeah. there is no, however, like an algebraic um, characterization of the shadow module. As far as I know, apart no. from the fact, uh, mm -hmm. apart from the obvious relation uh, as the other solution to the Casimir equation, etc. But right, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, I see the hand raised by Dima Panamarev. Dima, please. Uh, hello, uh, I, I just wanted to ask something. So on one of the previous last slides, you had something about uh, lowest weight states. Mm -hmm. uh, do I understand correctly? It was about uh, like those which are annihilated by special conformal transformations, right? Yeah, yes. And what do you, like, what's the role? You said it's going to be extended to special, well, to lowest weight functions. What do you expect yeah, apparently, is going to be their role? I, see this, no, I, don't, I don't know in, to which extent this makes sense, but uh, here we see that uh, we can 
clearly consider um, kappa transformation, special conformal gauge transformation on the C, C, C field. Mm -hmm. And then this transformation is nonlinear. Mm -hmm. This is delta, delta kappa C is nonlinear. And then this is uh, kappa and then the kappa and some function which is nonlinear here. Mm -hmm. So we are forced to consider nonlinear. Actually, there is no way to uh, truncate to the linear linear actions. Just uh, the conformal geometry tells us that the C, when you linearize, it is it carries a linear representation. But if you consider a fully nonlinear setup, no, it is not. <laughs> I mean, the kappa transformation will make C to some nonlinear functions of C. But but then uh, when you consider various physical uh, some quantity which is relevant in physics, for instance, wide invariant quantity or Bach equations, those appears to satisfy um, uh, the, the condition which vanishes that, that they vanish, should vanish on this k action, which is nonlinear. Mm -hmm. So I think that suggests that uh, these are some sort of extensions of uh, lowest weight. But, uh, mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Please, other questions to you, Hun? Maybe I can ask something else. Uh, so, can yeah. you comment something on promoting, uh, like, conformally invariant operators to wild invariant or conservative accounts? Ah, uh, that no, 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 here. You mean the conformal invariance versus wide invariance? Yeah. No, no, I don't have anything to say for the moment. Mm -hmm. Here, just uh, on the C action, it's uh, all, all the time case parameter is just uh, without ca uh, carrying any derivative, right? So originally, the, this was arised as gauge transformations, but the, its actual effect is like just rigid transformation. So mm -hmm. in, in that manner, I was just saying only on about the uh, uh, SO2 commodity transformation, not its case transformation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, there is a, a question from Nicolas, I think. Yeah, just to bounce on what Mitya asked, uh, this, this relation was more recently made precise by uh, Jordan Francois and Serge Lazzarini. Um, so if you want, I can give you more. More details about that, Amitya. Mm, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions to you, Hun? Uh, okay, if not, let's thank uh, you, Hun, again.